It was holiday time on the island of Sodor. All the engines were working happily together. Thomas was taking empty trucks to the yard. Terence the tractor was working in a field close to the line. Hello, Thomas. Nice day for it, wouldn't you agree? Nice day for what? Hadn't you heard? Mrs. Kindly's daughter is getting married today. Oh, yes, of course, replied Thomas as he went on his way. When he arrived at the station, he met James. Why should a splendid engine like me take messy stone trucks instead of coaches? Percy or Toby should do it. I'm too important. Thomas was cross. James, why don't you think about something or someone else for a change? You'll be surprised at how much better you'll feel if you do. Oh, please. Being important is the only thing for me to think about. Just then, they noticed Mrs. Kindly. She looks miserable. What's the matter? Asked James's driver. My sister has rung to tell me she can't make it to the wedding. She was supposed to bring the good luck package and I was so looking forward to a visit. James felt sorry for Mrs. Kindly, but Thomas had an idea. I'm sure we can help, but what is a good luck package? A good luck package? It contains something that is old, something new, something borrowed, and something blue. Can you help, please? Oh, we'll certainly try. The drivers telephoned Sir Topham Hatt, who agreed. We must cheer her up. Send Harold the helicopter to pick her up immediately. A few minutes later, there was a surprise from Mrs. Kindly. All presents incorrect, called Harold. I'm here to take you to the wedding. Hurry aboard, Mrs. Kindly, and fly the sky with me. Compliments of Sir Topham Hat. Oh, how lovely. Harold's made my paint dustier than ever, and now I have to find a good luck package. Thomas laughed. Remember, James, making someone happy will make you feel much better. And he puffed away. Soon, Mrs. Kindly was flying high with Harold. Oh, I've never seen the island like this before. It's wonderful. James arrived at Brendam Docks with his trucks. Edward was shunting coaches nearby. Hello, James. I hear you're helping with the wedding. Yes, we're looking for the good luck package. Yes, indeed. Something old, something new. Something borrowed and something blue, but where do we find them? James cut in. Edward smiled. Oh, they're probably staring you in your smoke box. Now I have to head to the station. I'm taking guests to the wedding. Standing in the smoke box. Ha! James looked all around him. Suddenly, he saw Cranky the Crane unloading a new set of shiny buffers. Look, there's something new. Can we use them, please, Cranky? Yeah, yeah. You can take the flatbed too. Just bring them back when you're done, all right? Replied Cranky. Something borrowed? That's the two things we found. But what about the others? I'm sure we'll find them too. Now, we'd best be on our way. As James was shunting his trucks into a siding, he heard a voice. Hello, James! There was Old Slow Coach, who Thomas and Percy had rescued from scrap. You're it! Smiled James. 
I want it, said the coach. There's something old for the wedding. Now we only need to find something blue. But what and where? You'll see, said his driver. Sir Topham Hatt has a plan. At last, they reached the village where the wedding was to take place. Ahead was an old engine shed. <laughs> what do you think of this, James? Laughed his driver. Thomas, what are you doing here? I'm the something blue, replied Thomas. Now, James, Mrs. Coinley has chosen you to be her special guest. When the bride and groom left the church for the party, Sir Topham Hatt addressed everyone. Ladies and gentlemen, may I present the good luck package. Something old, something new, something borrowed, and something blue. All found by James and his crew. The engines whistled and everyone cheered. Thank you, Thomas, said the bride. And thank you, James. It's the best good luck package ever. And she kissed James. Thomas laughed as James blushed bright red. You were quite right, Thomas, James whispered. Making someone happy does cheer you up. Did you enjoy your kiss? But James was embarrassed and pretended to be asleep. <laughs>